Hi there, it's Lynn here and uh, today you find me in the forest. We are going to go forest bathing. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, so forgive me if I appear to be a little out of practice. What's forest bathing for those who haven't done it before? Well, it's a kind of mindfulness or um, cross between a mindfulness and a meditation, I guess. Um, it's unstructured. It originated in the 1980s in Japan as a response to the tech heavy lifestyles that uh, Japanese workers were facing and the government or the health, health uh, industry recognised that it was having a significant impact on workers' health. So they came up with the idea of forest bathing, which is simple really. It's the, other, the Japanese name for it is Shinrin Yoku and basically it just means getting out in the forest, getting out in the fresh air, getting in touch with nature. Um, the, the main way that we go about it is by really slowing down and being conscious of everything around us, being aware of our presence and our surroundings. And while I guide you on this forest bathing experience, I invite you to imagine yourself in my situation. Imagine you are feeling what I'm feeling, that you're hearing what I'm hearing and that you're seeing what I'm seeing. All right, so let's let's go. Let's go forest bathing. So as we enter the forest, it's immediately significantly cooler. We're starting to feel the autumn temperatures take hold. I'm aware of my feet walking on moist, sandy, gravelly ground. I feel the occasional presence of a stone or a rock underneath the soles of my feet. And I can feel the coolness on my face as I walk. There's no breeze. I pause to listen to the forest. The dominant colouring of the forest, of course, is green, but in a multitude of shades of green. And emerging from the green, the tall vertical trunks of the trees in various shades of brown through gray, right through to black. The sun makes its presence felt in between the trunks of the trees. Now here, now gone. I become aware of a noise overhead. Of course, we are close to urban life and can't avoid the interruption caused by the presence of an aircraft. But I focus instead on the sound of a bird. to look more closely at the moss on the ground. And inspect the colour, the different shades of green. And feel that softness. In amongst the trees, I've suddenly spotted something man-made expected. Does it have a purpose? Or is it just a collection of branches piled together in one place? Who knows? And we come across the lichens on the bark of the tree in shades of blue and green. I listen once more to the sound of the forest. The birds, birds I don't know. I'm in a different country. I don't recognize these calls.
whisper of breeze touches my face. It's cool. I notice what may be a watercourse. I suspect it fills with water at times of rain. And I wonder what life congregates in this space. Frogs, perhaps? The ground beneath my feet changes slightly with more gravel present and I listen to the crunching of my footfall on the path as I walk. I notice a different trunk of a tree, very textural. Unfortunately, it's just a little too out of reach for me to get up close and feel it. But you can see the texture of the bark. And it disappears above my head. I reach a meeting of ways and must choose in which direction to continue. The green is broken with shades of orange as autumn approaches and makes its presence felt. I notice a flower I'm not familiar with and pause to take a closer look. It's almost fluffy. I don't know this flower at all. Suddenly I'm aware of ferns. And slow to look at the shape the contrast in shape between the ferns and the surrounding undergrowth. And listen once more to the sound of the birds. Mosses increase in size and number. Once again, the sunlight filters through the forest canopy and touches on the different colours of the autumn leaves appearing spasmodically amongst the green of the forest. I pause to inspect close, more closely the texture of a dead branch. 
death is just as important as life in the forest as it feeds new growth. Tiny fungi appearing on the surface. The trail has returned to a sandy texture. My footfall's almost silent now. It's still ever so slightly audible. I continue along the trail as the sun brightens the path. The colour of the leaves are brighter now, highlighted by the sun. The gravel of the path has become more prominent. And I'll stop to notice the colour contrast of the light on the moss at the base of this beautiful tree. Surrounded by ferns and then looking off in between the trees to see how far my vision can penetrate into the depths of the forest. calls of the birds ever present. I pause to check the shape of the leaves. Feel the texture. smooth with a slight harshness to the periphery. And looking from the underside with the sun, the light shining through from above. Forest opens. And reveals an open expanse of ferns and bracken. And here we have a big old grandfather of the forest. Once again, civilization intrudes on our peace as we walk, but it will soon pass.
and we have another crossroad. I make a decision. I decide we'll turn right. to investigate another plant I'm unfamiliar with. Is it an unusual shape? Is it a seed pod? Is it a flower? I'm uncertain. I discover a hidden trail. I'm curious to see where it leads. And at once we're beneath the shelter of the canopy. A darker forest. With twigs and leaves beneath our feet. Little stumps scattered about, covered in moss and small branches trying to entrap my legs and feet. Oh, I spy a mushroom. evidence of insects at work. Suddenly the sun highlights one particular tree, a dead tree but almost shining like a beacon. I smell the air. There's no definite scent or aroma, but it's just a smell of freshness. Um, has our path been blocked? Do we venture across? has been hindered by an obstacle. Do we venture? Do we venture forward? Evidence of small streams crisscross the forest. In times of rain, this area must be full of water. A 
I carefully pick my way through the muddy terrain. Innumerable mounds of leaves soften it, the path as we walk. The lane leads slightly uphill with a slight incline. And evidence of some kind of wild animal, we suspect. Wild pig digging, perhaps. digging around this old tree stump. It's an impossible shade of green, emerald green, the mosses. Once again, I feel the desire to touch and feel, feel the texture. And see what lies underneath. I'm fascinated. by a contrasting colour, teeny tiny berries emerging from this clump of moss. Is it an interloper, a different plant? I have no idea what it is. And the path continues to gradually rise, a slight incline ahead of us. I see the shadowy movement of a person walking through the forest up ahead. And I decide that this is where I will finish.